Oh, today? Yeah, are you kidding me? Yes. What? Yes. Well, this will make you really happy mm-hmm. because we have a special guest in studio. Joel Trainer is uh, the manager of Bogarts on Robson. Oh. Thanks for coming into the studio. Thank you very much for having me. It's and a pleasure to be here. Too bad we didn't have smell o radio, <laughs> smell o vision, I was going to say, because you can smell food and there's all kinds of delicious things mm-hmm. here. How are you guys capitalizing on Craft Beer Week? Uh, well, our restaurant is one of the premier um, sponsors of the event. Um, we run a wide selection of craft beer in our restaurant all year round. Uh, so for us, it doesn't really change much as, as far as day-to-day operation, mm-hmm. uh, but we're proud to, to sponsor the event and be a, a sponsored venue that people can know and say, yeah, this is one of a hundred restaurants in the Lower Mainland that I can go to and get a great selection of craft beer. Let's just talk. You've been in the industry for two decades. I have, yes. What was it like with craft beer? Did it even exist as a thing like 20 years ago? You know what? Honestly, outside of Granville Island, Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Uh, I was 16 years old, I was a busser, I didn't really know a heck of a lot about it. And yeah. As I progressed through the ranks as a server, bartender, management, as, as you would, um, it slowly started making its way around. Uh, and I remember even not five years ago, you know, you could go to a bar or a restaurant and craft beer wasn't a topic. Sure, it looked cool in the corner, oh, we've got this yeah. fancy beer from this brewery that Little nobody had beer. ever yeah. heard of. But now, if you go into a restaurant and you don't have at least a couple or a wide selection of craft beer, you're kind of in the backseat now. You know what? I, I, I experienced that the other day. I was at an unnamed bar in a yeast band, and I walked in, and they had four taps. None of them were craft. I saw that, and I walked, walked out. In? I wasn't having it because well, I want something tasty. And these days, if you go into a bar, and I can only imagine like Bogart's, and they have all the pull taps, yep. all really mm-hmm. cool and interesting. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many different craft beers do you have? Uh, we have eight. We okay. have eight craft beers, and then we also have a, a selection of, of regular beers, if you will, um, the non-craft beers. Yeah. The difference between a craft beer and a, and a non-craft beer would just be the volume that it's produced per year. Right. So in order to get that craft beer label, you have to be under a certain amount of beers produced per year. Right. Mm-hmm. Almost like a small batch of wine yeah, or something sure. like exactly. that. Exactly. How do you even decide, with all the craft beer to choose from in BC, which eight you're going to put on the tap? Right. I drink a lot. <laughs> oh, here we go. So he actually knows what he's talking about. Well, you, you have to. I yeah. guess so. You're not yeah. going to sell a car unless you've driven <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that's so right. You can't sell a beer unless you've tasted it. So right. fortunately for me, mm-hmm. uh, part of my job is to research beer and, and, and try it out. And fortunately for us, Eric, our part of the job is just to sit and taste the oh. beer and the food. You've it's actually come up with a menu to pair it with the, with the beers. So you have brought in uh, some samples of craft beers. Tell us what you have here. I did. Uh, So I have four uh, of the eight beers that we have on on draft, uh, as well as uh, a couple of menu items that pair nicely with them. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to start with me. uh, Oh, I would love to. Okay. So (laughs) the first (laughs) beer. (laughs) Dropping things over there. We're just getting started. Oh, I already was started. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, Okay. So the first one we have is uh, Parallel 49. Mm -hmm. Craft lager. Mm. So it's a light, crisp, clean, refreshing beer. Uh, and what I paired that with for you guys to sample uh, is our in house made crab cakes. Oh, I love crab cakes. And so why does this pair nicely? Um, I like it because uh, the crab has a, a very subtle, nutty kind of rich flavor on its own. Uh, is that dill? A little bit, yes. Mm. Yep. Mm. A little dill, a little bit of mayonnaise. Yep. Um, nothing overpowering one way or the other, and that's why I chose a nice, crisp, clean lager to go with it. Just keep two simple things together. And what that, I like about, sorry, about no. these crab cakes is that you can taste the crab in them. Sometimes you totally. get a crab cake and there's just full of filler. Exactly. Yeah. It's like full of crab meat. Yep. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's the idea, right? So a, a simple dish with a simple beer. You don't need to complicate this up by any means. Mm-hmm. That, that Parallel 49 craft log, it's kind of becoming the unspoken beer of Vancouver. I well, see it's, it everywhere. Absolutely. Now. It really and is. it's a, it's award winning as well. Mm. Um, these guys have done a fantastic job with this beer. Yes, um, they have. There's most restaurants you go to you can find this beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also uh, at the baseball game, the Vancouver Canadians. Oh, is it they really? Have, they have it there. And nice. I love the labeling on the can. It's the yeah. East Van yeah, the Cross. Uh, yeah. yeah, the East Van Cross. Yeah, all and, of and they've got the logo in the same layout as it says East yeah. Van on the on the big cross there on, Smart. on Clark. Yeah. So. Okay, well uh, so I like this beer too because I'm not, I don't know a lot about craft beers, but it's not too hoppy and I'm mm. not a fan of a uh, really hoppy beer. And it's not bland kind of 
skunky either. Nope. It's nice. The lager, it's crisp. It's a really tasty Exactly. Beer, yeah. And that's why, I mean, if you're going to win an award for a lager, you got to do it just right. Mm -hmm. And these guys have done that. Because everybody does a lager. So how do you compete? That's of right. Course, yeah, yeah. To stand out, to be known yeah. as one of the best, mm -hmm. you got to get everything precisely right and, and Parallel 49's done that for yeah, sure. Good yeah, good job to them. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next one we brought in is the Yellow Dog Brewing Co. Play Dead IPA. So not only does it have a great name, but it's a really great beer. Now, contrasting to what you just had, this one will be very full and very hoppy. I could smell the hops even before I put it in oh, my mouth. Oh, big time, yeah. I don't dislike it, though. Something, mm -hmm. There's something about it that's almost citrusy. It is, it is yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a it's a full beer, a full-bodied beer. Uh, and what I paired it with is uh, uh, the Bogart's Cobb Salad. So mm. unlike a traditional Cobb Salad that's made with blue cheese and blue cheese crumble, Ours is made with a, a house-made honey cider vinaigrette, and we use goat cheese, just to lighten it up a bit. Mm. Can I just say that when you think about bar cuisine, I'm going to give you that word, you don't think of, you know, delicious. I mean, this no. is something that I would get if I went out yeah. to a high-end restaurant. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and like I said, it's, it, it's our take on a, on a very classic dish, um, and it's it's got a lot going on in there. Avocados, tomatoes, bacon, egg grilled chicken. Yeah. It's not just your basic salad with Caesar dressing and romaine lettuce. Exactly. There's a lot yeah. going on, which is why I like to pair it with a full-bodied, strong beer to complement each other. Totally. It's nice and, and peppery a bit, the chicken. Yeah, and it, the, the IP just gets you in the gills just a little bit, but as soon as you get a bite of that, it just all those other flavors just bring it in, and it's really nice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much like we did on the last one, a, a very simple beer with a very simple dish, we'd on contrast side, we went with a very full beer mm -hmm. and a very full salad to boot. We have two more to test. We have Joel Trainer in studio. He is the manager of Bogarts on Robson. We're talking about Craft Beer Week. Bogarts is one of the big sponsors. And more with Joel Trainer when we come back. Hey, bro, one of the sponsors is Bogarts on Robson. And the manager, Joel Trainer, is in studio. Again, thanks for doing this. Thank you. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Favorite segment of the show. <laughs> uh, because he's brought in some delicious food that is paired well with different craft beers. Uh, we're running our way through them. What's the next one that you brought in? Uh, okay, so the next one we have here uh, is the Twin Sales Dat Juice Citra Pale Ale. What's up with Dat? <laughs> what is that? Well, you I'll tell you what that is. Uh, they use citra hops, 100% hand-picked citra hops. So the difference between a citra hop and a, and a normal hop, or another hop, I should say, uh, is that it has the aromatics of citrus fruits, grapefruits, melons, pineapples. So when you're in the brewing process and then the tasting process, you get really strong tones of citrus fruit, but there's nothing actually added to the mm. beer. That's fascinating. How do yeah. they make citrus hops? They they grow. Like they just grow. No, nope. yeah, they're just grown, and and that's just how they are, and that's the aromatic that comes from them, and you can even smell oh, it. Oh, you totally when, smell the citrus, and then taste it. When you say hand picked, does that affect the hop if it's not like in a big batch and rolling around and stuff? Yes. Does it make a difference? Hundred percent. No kidding. It, it keeps the uh, the form of it right. Instead of just getting mulched up and pressed yeah. up against other ones, they're literally just hand picked placed in a basket and then moved on to the conveyor from there. Instead of just getting crumpled and pressed and thrown in a sack and then loaded right. up in the back of a truck, you know, these guys are actually taking the time to do it and do it right. Oh, okay. And it's interesting, we were talking about how some of the big, you know, established brewers are putting citrus, lime and orange flavors and whatever. And you made an interesting comment about how they're kind of following the craft brewers now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my point was that if you were at a point where Bud Light has to change its beer, just to kind of you know stay in the market with these guys, yeah. obviously it's it's catching on like wildfire. For yeah, sure. for sure. A lot uh, of that's here too. It is, right? Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. This would be a good summer kind of craft yes. beer. It's really yep. nice and chill because it's got that refreshing citrus. Yeah. absolutely. And it's and it's still a, a bigger beer, a lot of hop. It's a it's a full body mm -hmm. beer. And and one of the things I would like to pair it with it from our menu um, is our our Brussels sprouts. Uh, so fried Brussels sprouts, uh, a little bit of salt, uh, crushed peanuts, garlic. Just to kind of... Oh, you put peanuts on the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Patrick, no, Good. no, that's been... No problem. <laughs> that's a great move. Yes, I really yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, the contrast of the, of the crunch and then the, a little mm -hmm. bit of salt, and then you, you clean your palate with mm -hmm. a citrusy flavored beer, nothing added, but just the flavors that come through, they work really well together. It's interesting mm -hmm. because Eric and I are both formerly from Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I moved here, I thought, everybody does Brussels sprouts here. I mean, in Alberta, it was like, ugh. Yeah, no, we yeah. didn't like Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Like, what, what is that? Well, I think the, the difference now between the, the 
the perception of Brussels sprouts mm-hmm. is just boiled and mm-hmm. kind of bland. Whereas now, you know, the, the way of making them, yeah. they, they get blanched, they get fried, yeah. and you can pretty much toss them and coat them in anything. Totally, like, yeah. Just to get some real good flavor on the typically bland vegetable. Linda, I like to take the leaves off when I like cut them in half, and then I put them on a pan, and then break some of the leaves off, and then when you, you like put them at 425, and you get little like kind of uh, little chips, Right. Off the Brussels sprout leaves, and that's delicious. And you just put a little salt and oil in there. It's fantastic. You're talking to someone who still hasn't turned her <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moved into my new condo a year ago. I'm encouraging you to get into it. Oh, well, now it. you have a project. You know what well, we should I'll do? Just invite you over. We should do a time. segment where I cook for the first time in your oven. <laughs> you figure out how my oven works. Uh, what's the last one? Uh, okay, so the last beer we have, uh, one of my personal favorites, is uh, from Fernie Brewing mm. Company. Uh, it's a huckleberry wheat mm. ale called What the Huck. Whoa, watch it. <laughs> watch it. I said Hello. huck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is, uh, this is a really great beer. This is what I would like to call or classify rather as an in-between beer. So people who maybe aren't so big on beer, this would be a great place to start. Totally. It's got a little bit of a, a smooth and full finish to it. But there's also that nice little bit of sweetness from the huckleberries, mm-hmm. which I think a lot of people who say, oh, I don't like beer, would probably yeah. be able to ease into something like this. Yeah, and the huckleberry isn't stronger, but it is more prominent in the flavor, I find. So it does smoothen it out like that. It is exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's not overly hoppy. Like yeah, the, no. The last two that, no. we, that we tried, uh, it's a very smooth finish and just the right amount of sweet. Not one where it's like, oh, this is way too sweet. Yeah. That's not like beer. a teenager's drink. That can exactly. happen. Yeah, yeah. This, and I don't mean that, I know there's a lot of women who are real craft beer aficionados, mm-hmm. so this is not an insult, but this would probably appeal to women. 100%. From the point of view is that it's soft, it's yep. light, it's a little bit fruity, but it, again, is not like a manly man's exactly. hoppy beer. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a, a beginner beer. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we've paired it with uh, the um, mac and cheese that we make in, uh, at our restaurant. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, Check that out. Mm. You should definitely try this. It's mm. it's rich, it's cheesy, it's creamy, it's got bacon in it. What kind of cheeses are we working with? Uh, we are working with Gruyere, Gouda, oh, Gouda. Uh, Matza, oh. and Asiago. Oh my goodness. Cheese. Yes. So we're, we're not we're not shy with the cheese, that's for sure. Thank you, yes. uh, but the great thing about it is because it's it's the, the dish itself is rich and creamy and heavy, uh, a nice sweet smooth beer to complement that. Yeah. It really works the palate very well. It really does the smoothness of the melted cheese, and then like you just said, that smooth what the huck at the end. It's, what the huck? You know what you're doing, man. Oh, the huck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm coming to see you. Yeah, right. I think you should. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. And you know everything about the craft beers. They're lucky to have a spokesperson like you. Thank you. I appreciate the, uh, that. The yeah. person who is representing them, Joel Trainer, manager of Bogarts on Robson. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you very much Happy for having me. Happy Craft Beer Week. Woo! Cheers. Uh-